crazy local. Bastard. What the fuck? Oh, fuck. Well, I woke up this morning and I wanted some waffles. Then I remembered I don't have any maple syrup. Luckily, I have a couple of gallons in the fuel tank I gotta go get out. Oh yeah, it's still there. It's all down in there. Let's dig it out and see what we got. All right, kids, don't try this at home. Chunks out of there. Over there. I'm gonna have waffles in no time. That wasn't even the best part. You wanna see the best part? There's the best part of it right here. Oh yeah, there's still more. Calling the boys, it's time for some pancakes. This is gonna be fun. Oh, it got on me. Oh no. I got syrup on me. Oh, it's never gonna come off. Oh man. My new favorite worst fluid. It's not transmission fluid, it's not antifreeze, it's fucking maple syrup. It's my new favorite worst. I can see you all shaking your head. Just replace the gas tank! Yep, that is the right answer just replace the gas tank but because this all solidifies in the bottom of the tank and there was about two inches of it I'm just gonna go ahead and get out as much as possible because it doesn't seem to be mixing with the fuel I'm gonna get up as much as possible and then the other eighth of an inch that's left in there we'll just go to the bottom and it it'll avoid the pickup screen so, I'm okay with that. And the customer's okay with that because it might not be 100% the right way to do this, but it'll work. And that's what we're going for here. We're trying to make this work. why I had this gas tank at a 45 degree angle all day yesterday in the sun so that all of that sugar and syrup could drain down to this corner so I could get it out. Judging by it here, I've gotten a, uh, a large majority of it out. I'm okay with that. 
the rest of that will just keep the bottom of the tank from rusting. Let's see what we got here. That's what was in there. Just a couple of gallons of syrup in your gas tank. Yes, sir. -y. I'm gonna take a break and make some waffles. Easy peasy. And please quit hiring mechanics off of Craigslist. A guy shows up in a Toyota Corolla with a fucking trunk full of tools, no toolbox. I wouldn't let him work on my car. I wouldn't let him work on my lawnmower. You know, companies like Wrench and uh, Your Mechanic. Uh, it, it's not difficult to go to Lowe's and buy a shitty toolbox um, and sign up with Wrench, your mechanic, and uh, slap a magnet on the side of your minivan, roll around pretending to work on cars, and then when you fuck up, the responsibility falls back on the company that you're working for. You have no credit no credibility in in the jobs that you do and then they got to send somebody else out to fix it um, you know at least in a shop if if you screw up on something the customer knows where to find you they know where you are um, but as a mobile mechanic um, I've been in the same area for years um, that everybody knows where I am and I address any comebacks I, I address immediately I take care of the situation uh, fix what may be wrong and 95% of the time it's not even my fault 95% of the time it's a happenstance of something else that failed around the same time and I always try to take into consideration what may happen um, you know, you replace a fuel filter on a, on a vehicle, um, you're gonna get more fuel flow. Chances are the fuel pump, if it's that old, it's just gonna decide to fail at that point because uh, all the sludge is released from the fuel pump. text on the hotline. What the fuck is broken now? My car isn't mobile, so it would have to be at my place. Well, great. The Audi died on me the other day. That's what Audis do. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? They're all fucking text messages from people uh, that I gotta get to today. Not getting to all of them today. Sorry. Back to the Catholic priest thing. If you're a Catholic priest, you might want to choose a different profession. Uh, so what you might not know is I'm a mobile mechanic and I work around uh, the auto parts stores in this area and Recently, it was brought to my attention that a couple of the shops around here don't like what I'm doing. They started bitching about me doing jobs out in front of uh, the auto parts stores. Um, but there's a trade-off. Um, it's 28 degrees outside right now, and I have to go do a couple of jobs. So, luckily it's not raining, because when you start on a starter, a transmission pan gasket, or any other job that requires you to lay on your back underneath the car and it starts raining on you 
yeah, you're fucked and you have to finish the job. Um, that trade-off is, is I have the freedom to do a job when I want to do the job. If I don't want to do the job or work on your shitty Audi, not doing it. Uh, I don't get the, the luxury of sitting in a warm building with a coffee pot and a fucking microwave and a bathroom. If I'm out on a job site and I'm two miles away from a store, well, I'm gonna have to wait. Wanna eat lunch? McDonald's. Bad, bad, shitty food. But they're, they're fine hiding behind their desk talking shit about people out here doing real work when they can just sit there and drink their fucking coffee and wait for the next job. They don't have to put out any effort, go looking for jobs. They just sit there and wait for the fucking service rider to do something, wait for an oil change to come in, because God knows we love doing oil changes. So while I'm sitting out here waiting for your customer to go to the local auto parts store to figure out why their car is still broken after you just fixed it, they're gonna go in and try to find the part that you charged them 300% for, the $50 part you sold them for 150, and then charged them two hours labor, kept their car hostage while it only took you 15 to 20 minutes to put the part in, I'll be sitting here waiting. So why don't you go have a nice cup of shut the fuck up and I'll do your job for you. Have a great day.